everybody, welcome to Italy. We're close to Rome. If you saw this morning's video, if you haven't, there's gonna be a link in one of the corners up here. I've been lucky enough and I'm with Paul and Sam and James have been with us. Paul is behind the camera. Thank you for filming, Paul. We have been lucky enough to be drive. We have been lucky enough to test drive the brand new McLaren 720S today. I did a behind the scenes video of what it's like to get invited to one of these events. And now it is time for me to tell you about this car in detail, give you all the stats and tell you about what it's like to actually experience, drive, and whether this has lived up to all of our expectations. Let's kick it off with the interior of this car because 91% of the entire car is brand new. The only things they've kept the same are things like the rear reversing lights and little things they just didn't need to replace and where they couldn't remove any weight already. All the rest is basically brand new. All of the switch gear inside is made from aluminium and feels absolutely unbelievable to the touch. Not one spot is in plastic. It's all either Alcantara, carbon fiber, aluminium or leather. This particular car has the carbon seat. So if I hop in, they're not the easiest thing in the world to get into, but once you're in, they really hold you in nicely. P1 style steering wheel, which is full of Alcantara and carbon fiber, looks absolutely fantastic. These slightly tiny uh, shift paddles, which I'm not a massive fan of, but they do have this rocker system McLarens have always had, which are brilliant for texting whilst you're driving. <laughs> they are brilliant for just being able to, if you got your hand out the window, you can shift with one hand, it's fantastic. And overall, the inside of this car is just a massive step up compared to old generation McLarens, but mainly any of the comp competitor cars. Things like the 488 feels completely outdated because in here you're properly in a spaceship. Some things are familiar. For example, the active panel here, ESC off aero button, which lifts the rear wing up, as well as all of your track normal and comfort settings. Little gadgets, for example, obviously the instrument cluster, which is all a screen now, but you can actually whack that down like this for when you're on track. So that only tells you your speed, gear, and revs and doesn't uh, obstruct your view too much. So when you're on track, you can properly aim for your apex and things like that. Little details that McLaren have come up with, which are absolutely fantastic. This is a brand new carbon fiber monocoque as well. So it actually goes all the way over the driver, unlike in 650 and 12C, where it was just sort of around the driver. And the stats on this car are absolutely unbelievable. 720 horsepower, 770 Newton meters of torque for only 1,283 kilos, that is dry weight. That means that this car actually does 2.8 to 60, that's seconds of course, which is just mind-bendingly fast and goes all the way to 212 miles an hour. So we're talking hypercar speed for this thing, but priced at around 220,000 pounds, starting price for that option. So let's say this is a quarter of a million pound car. That puts this car in supercar price with hypercar performance. <laughs> I don't usually do full-blown geek out reviews, so I've got Paul with me who's gonna help me out Hello. today. A few things I also wanna to talk to you guys about are the specific spec on this car. Obviously, we mentioned the race seats, but this also has the 4,700 and a tiny bit more pound option of the sports exhaust. <laughs> got stealth pack which means they're black as well and you know how you can tell it's got a sports exhaust because of the little vents the though. little vents yeah. on the exhaust pipe it's also got on this car this is not spec this is on all five uh, i was about to say 540 <laughs> 720 s's all the glass behind us which yeah. gives you this 360 point of view just absolutely stunning you've just been driving this car and you're a bit taller than me so i'm gonna very good forward ah should we do a loud start yes so let me crack the window it's got this setting so if you have ignition on you press active panel and put track and track. It will start the car and give it two big bangs after you start it. So, let's give it a go. Battery 45 days. I'm good. <laughs> oh, that looked better last time. Oh. What is that? Key not found within the vehicle. <laughs> oh, gosh. Loud start. Let's open your window as well. Three, two, one. <laughs> it's cool that. This being one of my first proper reviews, you're gonna have to help me and tell me about your opinion on this car as well a little bit because me you've been or... driving it around. You, that's you. First things first, let's not muck about. Supercar price. Yeah. And when we say hypercar fast, I mean we mean it. 
Yeah, you can forget four, five, eight. You can even forget things like your Oracle. Yeah. And things like that. This is in a different leap. In a straight line, whilst braking and round corners, is just completely insane. They haven't just upped the acceleration. Oh God, is it straight? Yeah. Just up the acceleration, they've had to up the braking and everything that goes with that, yeah, to make sure that the entire performance of this car is, is high. It's just, yeah, exactly. Well, because the brakes are just unreal, they're lighter and smaller <laughs> than they were on 650S. And as you said in your video, Paul, we need to think of this car as a 650S replacement and not a 675LT replacement because. Even though it blows the 675 LT out of the park in terms of performance, it is more based on being a replacement for the 650 and being usable. And that's where things such as the 360 view come into play because this car is truly, effectively, a daily hypercar. And that's something I didn't think I'd be saying or seeing or experiencing for at least another few years. I'm enjoying this. Are you okay? I was just thinking. It would have been a lot more funnier yeah. Yeah. if for my video I had to review the car whilst you were doing this because it would be impossible. Yeah, I know. It must be absolutely terrifying for you. But yeah, this car from one point to another blows everything out of the water unless you're spending over a million pounds. So you can hear maybe the sports exhaust doing its thing in the background.
driven, I've been lucky enough to drive quite a few supercars, no hypercars, you've driven a LaFerrari, jealous about them, by the way. I want to talk about a few things in terms of how it handles, now then, what I can't believe is just how stable this car is, how much grip it has to all this new aerodynamic work, they've got all sorts of slits and slats and gaps all over the place in this body, which basically work together like an orchestra to fuel air through the entire body of this car and push it and stick it to the ground. Certainly does its job really well because you feel like you're driving on train tracks. I mean, look at that. That's yeah. just effortless. In any other car, you'd be off. Well, not any other car, but in a lot of other cars, you'd be off the road there. It's the body. The entire body styling is developed for aerodynamic perfection. Yeah. And what that does is it gives the driver so much confidence yeah. that you can point it in any direction at any speed on any corner and it will make it out the other side. It's incredible. It's, it's one of those cars, it's like it's like a tech nerd. You'll yeah. look at this car, give it some sort of impossible task and it'll look at you and just go, yeah, I right. can do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I don't think I've ever gotten into a car that you A, have to adjust to so much, but B, that fills you with confidence so quickly. Yeah. So you have to recalibrate your brain to the speeds that this thing will do and carry through. It's like, I remember watching Richard Hammond talking about Formula One driving, and he was saying that when you come out of a corner, you can't even calibrate as to how fast you're going as soon as you put your foot down, and you can brake later, turn in, turn in sooner, accelerate earlier than in any other car, and I feel like we're using maybe 15% of the potential of this car, and as you said, what would be fascinating would be to go around track in it, yeah, to be yeah. able to properly see what it's doing, which sadly we're not allowed to do today. So let's use these roads as a track. As a race track, track yes. <laughs> there are strict speed limits and mini police. Yes, and we are abiding those speed limits. Yeah, very carefully. This seems like an appropriate time to also talk about the usability of this car, because that's one thing they really tried to aim for is making this car as usable as possible for everyday usage. We're in a tiny little Italian village right now, and I'm, I, as you said, I don't have sweaty palms or anything like that. It's not, well, he says, as he squeezes past yeah. these cars, it's not absolutely terrifying to drive around, and it being one of these dual clutch semi-automatic gearboxes, um, you don't get any judderiness, the clutch is very easy, and you're not finding yourself constantly fighting with the car just to do simple things like navigating around the town. Super easy to see out of. One thing it doesn't have is a reversing camera, which does surprise me for a car they've angled so much towards sort of daily usability. And yeah, daily hypercar, it's unreal, isn't it? Because you could drive this around town, pop to the shops, and then you could floor it home. I don't think I've ever driven a car with this wide of a breadth of ability. Yeah. A car that can perform this well and be this sort of impressive when you're flooring it, and yet be so good around town. It's, the, word, um, the words, breadth of ability. It's really what I think they angle this car towards. And it is so easy to fall into the gap of saying it doesn't have as much drama as the LT. And you're like, yeah, but the LT version of this will come, and when that comes, man, oh man, will that be impressive. Because all they need to do, really, they don't really need to, they don't need to improve performance. They just need to add drama to this car. Yeah. Because that's the main overriding thing which detracts from the experience of this. And I really respect this car. The word respect is something no one can deny. I don't think anyone can get into this car and say it's not a good road car. In fact, I think this is potentially, as a mechanical machine, the best car on sale right now. Yeah. And potentially, and these are big words, one of if not the best car ever made in terms of the ability that it has and it yeah. being a machine and it being a car. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying it's my favorite car. I'd much rather have like a Pagani Zondo or something over this because of the emotional side that that has. But as a machine, it is absolutely unbelievable and very hard to floor mechanically. Emotionally is where it loses out, potentially because it's so hard to get something so mechanically good and still keep the emotion, because you've got things like the turbos. Um, and one thing I'm quite disappointed about is the engine. So it being a new four liter engine, I was expecting a bigger change. It feels, sounds, and sort of behaves in a similar way to the other ones in that suction way that delivers its power in such a linear way. It's not just like, boom, here, have all the power. It's kind of like, here, we'll tickle you a bit with some and then give you the four bananas at the end. Yeah, yeah, um, that's a, yeah that's a very good point, actually. So it 
doesn't the way the engine behaves sounds and everything really doesn't feel as different as certainly doesn't feel 41 percent different yeah and whereas in fact it really is <laughs>